Welcome to the review of Lure of the Temptress. It was created by Revolution Software and released in 1992. It is an adventure game with a third person perspective. The story is pretty convoluted, but basically it boils down to you playing a character, Dermont, as a peasant. An evil enchantress named Selena has defeated the king and his army so you and everyone else is taken as prisoner. The goal is to escape, kill Selena, and rescue the city Turnvale from tyranny. So you awaken in the dungeon. The first thing you'll notice is there's a mouse cursor you can move around. When you hover over objects, the upper left corner of the screen gives you a simple description. If you right click on an object, it gives you actions you can perform. Anytime a dialogue is displayed, the game basically pauses. Here's one of the evil creatures that helped the enchantress take over the king. It's called a squirrel. So basically, your first part of the game is trying to escape. The escape is pretty much real time, so you have to quickly act. But I found the game very frustrating, because it seemed like every action you tried to do was to no avail, such as obtaining this sack. It's too heavy. Okay, let's try to open it. You can't do that either. Okay, one of these actions has to work. What about pulling it? Nope, it's too heavy. Okay, how about a weapon? Let's try to grab one of those. There's a nice halberd. Nope, there's no way to get it. Wait, how about we look through this one? No, it's out of reach. Okay, let's open this barrel. No, it's securely sealed. Another thing that's pretty lame is the death scene. Here I got captured by the squirrel and this is what happens. Yep, that's it. And then you're presented with an option to either restart or restore. Luckily there is a save game. If you choose restart, of course, it begins from the very beginning. Restore allows you to choose your game and start back from that point. There was a really cool feature where you could look through grills and holes in the wall and it would actually show you a perspective as though you're really doing it and you could hover over things in the background and it would show a description. So that was looking into our cell and here is the other perspective looking outside the cell. The game has a simple menu where if you hover the mouse cursor toward the top it'll drop down. You can see the about menu and this is where you can save games and restore games. And you're allowed four slots and you can name them whatever you want. There's also the ability to turn the sound on or off and slow the text down. One option you can do in any screen is do a look. It gives you a description of the area. Or you can look at specific objects by right clicking on them. You can examine your inventory and you can view status which shows your inventory. You move around by left clicking on a spot on the ground or a doorway. You can also create dialogue with someone by right clicking and saying talk. Sometimes you're presented with options with dialogue and toward the top of the screen you have to choose one of the options. Sometimes you're trying to find objects on the screen, but they're so small it's impossible to see, such as this knife. You see it on the barrel over there? It took me forever to find that. 
So the game is pretty much a mystery solving and scavenger hunt. So here the mystery to escape is you have to close the door with the squirrel and then lock it. And then you have an infinite amount of time to escape. And let me tell you, you're going to need it. You can also use an object on another object. So you right click on the destination, then you choose the source. Like here we're using a knife on the sack. One redeeming quality of this game is that you'll meet all kinds of people and NPCs. It kind of reminds me of Ultima 6, only not quite as detailed or intense. Some people you meet have humor that they introduce into the game, such as Rat Pouch. For example, this guy Marcus basically tells me that I smell. And then you have a guy named Rat Pouch walking around telling bad jokes or telling people like this barmaid that she reminds him of his mother she says do I know wait for it yes she was a woman too yeah pretty lame He's always calling people the wrong sex, too. Like, he calls that man a madam, and he calls this woman a sir. There is a really cool feature in this game with Rat Pouch. You can basically command him and tell him anything to do. So here I tell him to push on these bricks. And you can chain commands, too. If you want him to do multiple things, one after another. You'll notice there's a lot of pauses in this game in between the actions. That can be kind of irritating. Okay, Red Pouch, come on, let's go. Now, how in the world would someone know to do that without looking it up on the internet? Another redeeming quality about this game is the graphics are pretty good. and the transitions to the screens is pretty smooth as well and every once in a while you'll have a few animations like this kinda cheesy but it adds a little bit of fun to the game but one of the things I hated about this game is it's so linear you get stuck and you can't progress unless you figure out how to do one little thing. I also ran into a crash and the whole game went down like that. There's also annoying music. And annoying sounds. And the AI in the game is absolutely horrid. So I tell this man Lutheran something that's pretty secret. So he says, we can't talk here, follow me. Okay, so I go ahead and do that. And then when we get in here, he just stands there. Okay, come on, Lutheran. So I think, well, maybe I need to right-click on him and say the exact same thing again. Oh, and then all of a sudden he's responsive. So anyway, in closing, I'd just like to say the game was pretty irritating to me. I really didn't have much fun playing it. I felt like it was so linear and mysterious, it was impossible to progress. I had to use the internet as my source and get clues that way because the NPCs weren't much help. They didn't even really give useless clues like they do in some games. This is an example where good graphics, cool technology does not replace gameplay. Lure of the Temptress has no replay value whatsoever. And that wraps up this review. See you next time.